This is a best practice guide showing you how to configure a Sylvie 6 series scanner. But before we do, I just want to make sure that the scanner is angled correctly looking at the code. If your laser beam is looking at the code like this, this is wrong. It's obviously going to get too much reflection coming back to the scanner. You must have approximately 15 degrees onto the code, like this. So we usually say somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees. So as long as your scanner is connected like this, everything's going to go well. The photoelectric switch which triggers the scanner should be connected through here on pins 10, 11 and 12 in the connection box. The host output comes from pins 42, 43, 44, which is ground, transmit data and receive data. Here you can see inside the connection box and this 9-way D-type here is only for the auxiliary programming of the scanner. These connections here are for the host output, 42, 43, 44. So having installed SOPAS on your PC, you'll need to connect to the scanner. Here I'm showing connecting using Ethernet. And if we go connect to new device, choose next, we we'll choose the internet protocol, since we're connected on Ethernet. It's found the device. We can use the wizard, but on some PCs this might not work. Okay, so now we're adding the device, uploading the configuration and putting it into our project tree on the left. If that didn't work for you, the best way of connecting to it is to do it manually. So just choose direct connection, internet protocol, and follow this through and type in the IP address. Um, the scanner itself is default 192.168.0.1. Obviously, you can change your PC to match or alternatively the scanner. But we have a connection, so I'm going to show you now how to connect to the scanner and how to configure it. So first thing to do is to click Start, which will turn on the laser beam on the scanner. And it's going to start flashing. You can see it's already actually reading my code, but still, we're going to go through the setup routine anyway. OK, so make sure you've got the angle that I described just a short moment ago between 10 to 15 degrees onto the code. And make sure it's pointing at the code and the code is stationary. And then we're going to click Auto Setup. We click Adapt the Code Configuration. And the scanner will go through testing different scan frequencies until it finds the code. OK, you can see here we found it's code 128, 13 digits long. The scanner we're using actually uses the time of flight principle to measure the distance to the object or to the code. And if it knows the distance, it can set the focus. So this actually has automatic focus control. But we can optimize the focus position if we wanted it to be static. We're not going to do that. But what we will do is click Optimize Scan Frequency to maximize the performance at the range where we've currently got it. You can see it's scanning through different frequencies and testing the read rate at those different frequencies. OK, you can see now the scan is actually in diagnostics mode, scanning the code and getting a good performance. Here, actually, 99%. What we're looking for is anything above 75%. That doesn't mean that 75% of the codes that you send past it will read. What it means is that of the 600 scans a second that it does, 98 or 99% of those are good scans. OK, so we're going to click Finish. And now we're going to optimize the scanner. First thing to do is to set the reading trigger. So at the moment it's set for sensor one, reading trigger source <coughs> is the stop point. I'm going to change that also to stop on a good read. So when it's read the code, it'll turn out the light. That's just good practice and preserves the life of the laser diode. Next thing we need to do is to configure the codes. So if we double click on here, we're going to disable the codes that we don't want and only enable code 128 and it was a fixed code 13 digits. We remember we saw that when we ran auto setup in the quick start menu up here. Okay. One thing we must never do is on interlude 205 
Uh, it should never be left as free running like this because it will invent numbers. So interleave 2 or 5 must always be fixed or preferably turned off. Okay, next thing to do is under date, data processing, output control is default at the end of the trigger. That means it sends the data when the trigger sensor switches off. You can set this if you like to the end of a label. Don't do as soon as possible, just leave it to the end of label and put a short timeout, maybe 50 milliseconds. Okay. Output format is the data string of how it comes out of the scanner. So in here we could put some any other characters that we wished. Or if we wanted to, we can put in some special characters by right clicking. And we could put in the number of scans, for example, it got of the code. That's called code security. Or a spacebar. Or any other code related items, which direction the code is in and so on. Quite versatile, really. Having configured the data string that comes out in output format 1, we now need to go through to serial. And if we're sending the data out on the serial port, then we can choose the board rate. Default is 57600, 8 none, 1. And you can see here the serial auxiliary interface, which is that 9-way D-type I showed you earlier on. Default is set for read diagnostics. But you can change that to monitor the host if you want to see what the data is being sent into the scanner or output format 1 or output format 2. Because we've got several output formats that means we can have this output format for example going to the serial and this output here going out to the Ethernet. Okay once you've configured the scanner we would then test it under quick start so if we click start here Make sure the scanner's reading the code satisfactorily at the furthest distance. Move it to the closest until it starts to drop off. And notice the switch points where it can and can't read to make sure that suits your application. If we're happy with that, we would save the parameters permanently in the scanner. And then we might want to keep a configuration. So we can export the device and give it a file name. The reason it says not defined here is because under the network settings, we haven't given the scanner a name. So we could call this one, for example, bag maker one. So now when we go to export the device, you'll see it comes up with the name. And if we wanted now to connect to another device and download it, all we need to do is to click edit and load device data to device, browse to find that file, and then we can send it to the, uh, to the scanner. I'm not going to do that just now though. Another way is we can actually choose print profiles. So if I click print profiles here, I can show preview and this will print out some special barcodes which will configure the scanner for us. You can see them here. So as soon as you power up the scanner, the laser beam comes on momentarily. And if you read any one of these barcodes, best to read them in sequence you'll hear the scanner beep and that will write the data's data to the scanner permanently. But that is permanent, so please be careful how you use these. I always like to remove this default code first, take it off and throw it away before you go near the scanner. Because I'll show you a video of how well the scanner reads and it's quite easy to read one of these by accident. Here you can see the barcode reader reading as it would be, as you would expect, going through the scanner from start, the scan lines going from the code start to finish in one sweep. And you can see on the screen up here, it's getting a successful read on each pass. But now you notice we're able to go through at some quite steep angles onto the code. And even going down to very low angles. This is very acute, probably 10 degrees. Even the laser line is not straight going through it. Yet we're still reading the code correctly, as you can see on the PC. You notice the scanner is still reading, even at this very low angle. You can see on the PC there. Even over a long range, that's a meter distance. It's still reading successfully. Even reading codes of such poor quality print as this. You notice on the PC. Codes being read from the top there.
So that's it. Thanks very much for listening and please do have a look at some of the other videos I've put on YouTube. Hopefully they help you configure the scanner. If they don't, please just phone uh, PhoneSec and I'm sure they'll be pleased to help you. Thanks very much.